Hi, I'm Charles Band, and this is the amazing Chris Endicott, and we're here to talk to you a little bit about our Indiegogo campaign for Prime Evils. Uh, we've been told to make this kind of short because we could talk for hours, I'm sure, since this is a project that was uh, kind of born in, what, 1969? Is that possible? Goes back a ways, yeah. Like 50 years a ways. But um, I'm sure most of you watching this already know a bit of the history. Uh, Chris can speak very well about it because Chris was uh, uh, Dave Allen's uh, right arm guy. I don't know if that's a good way to put it. Uh, and all this dates back many, 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 many years. Uh, but for those of you who don't know the history, very, very briefly, uh, I met Dave in the 70s. Uh, I was fascinated with stop motion animation. I was making small independent movies. Um, I was making, about to make a movie called Laser Blast, and I had this idea for these aliens to be these stop motion guys. And Dave was gracious and awesome and gave me what he said was an awesome deal because, you know, I didn't have a lot of money. And uh, when you look back at Laser Blast, uh, I think what really stands out, I mean, it's kind of a cool story, but what stands out were, were those aliens who <laughs> just carelessly left their laser gun in a desert and our guy found it and blew people up. And then they came back and, and picked it up. So, uh, you know, it began there and then many, many years of wonderful work. Um, you came in the picture in the 80s sometime. Mm -hmm. During full moons, He's yeah. still a young, young child over here, but he came in around the full moon days. You know, with Puppet Master and just before that, Dolls and all this under, uh, wonderful work. Dave Allen, uh, his, his uh, I don't even call it a pet project, that demeans it, his, uh, the project that he wanted to do from day one, and he told me, he said, Charlie, I'm going to do this work for you over the years, but you've got to find a way to make the primevals. You know, we can make it together. It's and he explained what it was, which sounded amazing, but like way out of my reach because it involved hundreds of stop motion shots, whereas, you know, I think Laser Blast had 10 or something or eight, you know, and they're expensive. And it's a technology now, unfortunately, is sort of uh, retro. Today it's all CGI, which I personally don't like at all, with a few exceptions. Anyway, I promised Dave, I said, Dave, one day if we make enough money, we're going to make Primeval. And sure enough, in the early 90s, which was the last stretch of awesome money uh, for Full Moon, we rallied our forces and we went out and shot the movie. Uh, Chris was on location, my dad was the uh, executive producer and you know he loved every minute of it. We shot for 10 or 12 weeks, which is about 8,000 times our usual schedule uh, in Romania, in Italy, the Dolomites. And the plan was afterwards to spend a year, year and a half doing 250, I'm not sure if that's the right number, stop motion animation shots, even though the movie was shot. So for Full Moon, it was, it was its most ambitious venture. The, the most money we ever spent on the movie it was some millions of dollars, which for Full Moon is billions in you know, the, the mainstream world. Uh, and to have the movie shot and all that money spent and then know it would be taking a year, year and a half to do stop motion was a big investment for us and, and also be able to wait. So about two-thirds of the way through that, I'm not sure exactly the percentage of that, the shots were coming in, they were magnificent. And this is hard to talk about, but poor Dave Allen um, passed away from cancer. And that was around the same time where the fortunes of Full Moon sort of turned and, and you know, we had to kind of restrict and, and, and you know, get smaller and because the business changed. So essentially we put Prime Evils in a big box, which was administered by this man, big yep. huge box to wait for a day where we could afford to you know, come back and, and finish the movie, or at least finish as much as we could to let you guys see it. Uh, so far, so good? Yeah. Because I've said all the words. And no, 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 no. That's pretty, pretty, pretty much it. Yeah. And um, as things are getting better for Full Moon, um, Chris and I try to figure out a way to, to you know, preserve Dave's um, vision because the truth is to do the final 80 or 90 shots would be just unaffordable. Today there's not a lot of people who know how to do this and it's a very expensive technology. Um, so we wouldn't be able to finish the movie exactly the way they wanted but luckily he had very specific storyboards and what we finally came up with, uh, the, the compromise, was we were going to finish the movie which would still require a year of stop motion and a number of more shots so that it would be still presentable as a linear film. It would essentially not have the final, final act, which is where the dam breaks and all sorts of other expensive stuff happens, so that we would be able to then show uh, on a on Blu-ray, because we're going to obviously release it on Blu-ray. It may have some marginal theatrical release, we don't know. You'll essentially see two versions. One will be 
the slightly shorter version that will be you can watch it like any movie the other version will be the Dave Allen version where it will have the movie all the way to the bitter end and the shots that are missing will be storyboards and they're called what? When they're animatics, yeah, they'll be well rendered in animatics done by drawing but they won't be finished shots but they'll give you an idea of what the shots Yeah, so to you'll, you'll see in a missing shot, you know, a lizard creature running, a dam blowing up and this will be, you know, essentially a moving storyboard so you'll be able to see if for those who are interested, you know, had we had all the money in the world and Dave Allen was still alive, we would have finished the movie with those additional shots. Also included in this uh, incredible three disc Blu-ray set will be a documentary by the amazing Daniel Griffith, who's done incredible work over the years, who's followed primevals literally for at least a decade or two. And he's got tons of material, there's all this behind the scenes material that we're going to be able to show you people this pretty impressive stuff. Yeah, so it's really going to be a great collection when it's finally done. We're about a year away from that. Uh, we start this whole uh, enterprise in late January, early February. Um, when it's done, for those of you who love um, the work of Ray Harryhausen, uh, who love stop motion, which is really a lost art, I think you'll be so, so happy. This is like, this holds, I think, um, up to any of the great Ray Harryhausen films, which me as a kid, I mean, I'm sure you're, we share this. I, when I first went to see The Seventh Voyage of Sinbad and uh, all these movies that uh, Harry House and they were the magic films for me and, and they, they had a balance of effects versus story that was far I think more um, intelligent than today where you go to these big tentpole effects movies, CGI movies where it's all effects, you don't know what, you don't care, the people, the story, it's like you just get beat on the head with endless and sometimes very well done effect scenes but nonetheless uh, you get lost. I mean effects were very sparing, uh, sparingly used back in the day. So bottom line is Primeval's is going to be uh, so, something extremely special for people who love that kind of work. It'll be, the, the day it's finished, sometime late next year, it'll be immediately a retro, <laughs> a retro uh, unique experience. So, uh, but you got to tell a story or something, anything, drop in here. I mean, you've been, remember these shots, these stop motion shots are, I mean, just like, for those who really have no idea, explain sort of like one shot, just how it works. <laughs> well, I think most fans of the genre know that you shoot live action first and then in post-production you drop one of these characters in through different techniques. Sometimes it's like a Harry Housen animation shot, sometimes it's like a blue screen shot. But yeah, and, it's, and when it comes down to the animation, it's just a person with a puppet shooting one frame at a time, moving a little bit, taking a picture, moving again, taking a picture, all the while having in your head the whole performance. You have to keep the performance in your head and stretch down in time and think about it bit by bit by bit. And then when you get it back, you know, and at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's kind of a little bit of magic. It is magic. Also because, again, unlike CGI, not to keep beating up CGI, I mean, th this is um, one of the original Yeti uh, stop motion animation. Um, yeah, you know, it's, right? yeah, it's sculpted mostly by David with other people's help and uh, the fur work's done by David. So this is a character that David had in his head for a long time. In fact, this, there was an earlier version done in the 70s, uh, but David refined it for this version. And so this is kind of a character close to David's heart. And, and uh, the lizard creatures. Lizardmen, well. yeah, those guys are even older. They date they back to the 60s. And it was something <laughs> that David wanted to do for a long time. And the beautiful part about this, again, apropos CGI is, Yes, it's, it is a unique sort of uh, wizardry, but these are three-dimensional characters. You know, this is not a cartoon, this is not something enhanced in a computer. These are real characters, so there's something magical about seeing these guys. That's why for years, uh, after I met Dave, a lot of the movies I've made, um, I couldn't afford much stop motion, especially after Dave passed away, but, you know, we do rod puppetry, we do things that are live on set in camera. So, you know, the actor's not performing to a, you know, a spinning light or something. So anyway, to wrap all this up, um, uh, we are now, I think, three weeks into our Indiegogo campaign. We've raised some money, so thank you to all of those who've, who've contributed. We still have a ways to go, you know, we're only about 12, 13 percent of our, of our budget. Uh, we are going to make a few changes. Um, as you listen to this, we're going to take the beautiful Yeti sculpture made by the... Uh, the Higa brothers, yeah. The Higa brothers, who the sculpture is just magnificent. Uh, we don't have it here just yet, uh, but we're going to take that um, uh, sculpture, uh, the Yeti sculpture holding the lizard creature, and we're going to reduce it to 225 bucks. 
Uh, they're expensive to make because they're made in a certain way and they're expensive because they're all hand painted, but we want people to be able to own those, the limited quantity that we're going to make. So those are going to be uh, at 225 You can purchase those at 225 Of course, there's plenty more of the, uh, the awesome lizard creature busts uh, left. We've sold quite a few already. Uh, we're also going to put in shortly a few lower priced items. We're going to have a really cool t-shirt with some of the original art that Dave worked on. And we're also going to have 11 by 17 posters, so not everything is $100 and up. But I guess the bottom line is um, we, we're excited to finish this. It's, uh, I don't know where the future is exactly. There's some really nice things brewing, but it, it was and is the most expensive film and the most ambitious film that Full Moon ever made. And it doesn't take that much to finish it, so we, we appreciate all your contributions. Um, the cutoff is around January 10th, so uh, hopefully if you steal some Christmas money, you can uh, <laughs> send it into this project. Uh, and that's it. And, and please send letters, any ideas, suggestions. You know, the Indiegogo thing's been good to us. We've funded, or we've, we've added some money to some of our recent budgets. Like the last Puppet Master show, we, we raised some money and that was very helpful to put a little more value on the screen. And the world's very different today. <laughs> you know, the, all the stuff that kind of fueled what we did for so many years, like the video market and video rental, rental and Blockbuster and Hollywood, gone. So I know some of you watching this may not even have the experience of going to a Blockbuster and renting a video. That was a different era. But I think most of you have. So anyway, support uh, Primeval's. Any final words, Chris? Yeah, just, uh, let's see this film get done. Let's yes. finally get this out there for people yeah. to enjoy. And it's going to be awesome. So thank you so much. And we'll see you soon. And have a happy new year and Christmas and all that good stuff. Yeah.